Hey all, Alex here at your home of the Music Deep Dive, and today we'll be doing a review of the 2018 biography by David W. Blight, Frederick Douglass, Prophet of Freedom. David William Blight, born the 21st of March 1949 in Flint, Michigan. A graduate student of history at Michigan State and then at UW-Madison, Blight came into the field of history at a time when African American and Black history classes were starting to be offered at a collegiate level, and the ever-progressive scholar ended up entering and playing a prominent role in the nascent field. Blight has taught at numerous universities, including Harvard, Amherst College, and Yale, and during this time he's published several books on the Civil War era and its immediate aftermath. Most famous of these is 2001's Race and Reunion, a reappraisal of the Civil War, its legacy, and how the reason for fighting the war in the first place has been warped and distorted over the years, and ironically, it actually won the Frederick Douglass Prize for Outstanding Literature on slavery and abolition. As one of the era's most prominent historiographers, Blight has always expressed a sort of deep admiration for Frederick Douglass more than almost any other individual involved in the abolitionist movement, so putting him in the driver's seat of a proper full-length biography of Douglass seems like the most natural match you could ever hope for. Frankly, folks, I don't know what to tell you. I expected this book to be fantastic, and it was. Certainly, there's something about a biographer having admiration for a figure they're profiling that gives you a bit of trepidation because you're concerned about them being overly fawning, but that's not the case here. Blight doesn't display Douglas as the squeaky clean American hero, but rather a deeply complex individual who evolved considerably over time, but also struggled to grapple with the scope of the civil rights movement that was really rearing its head in the very late 19th century, butting heads with luminaries such as Ida B. Wells and Booker T. Washington. Not just his story, but his fire and his willingness to push his opinions beyond what the average American or even the average abolitionist would tolerate uh, is an enormous part of his legacy. Watching Douglas spar with figures like William Lloyd Garrison, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Abraham Lincoln, and the aforementioned Wells and Washington paints such an uncompromising portrait of the man and speaks firmly to the force of will that drove him straight to the head of the movement. Let's talk about speeches. Oh boy, Blight does not get enough of quoting Douglas' speeches. And how could he? I mean, Douglas's experience in... Um, studying ministry and studying oratory intently during his first years of freedom, combined with his natural passion, creates one of the best collections of speech writing and by all accounts speech delivering in the history of the United States or really any nation. And Blight does well in this narrative to pick out not just the drama and the intensity in Douglas' speeches, but the ebullience at times, uh, the sarcasm, the wit, and the humor. Whether it's him hitting the listener with imagery that's so vivid they can't help but fall over because of the sheer force of it, or uh, him utilizing this more subversive strategy by taking stereotypes of black people and turning them on their heads in amusing ways, um, Douglas was remarkably convincing while spanning quite a few different rhetorical approaches. You can also feel his style evolve in ways as America evolved, and it goes through different stages in the uh, rights battle that uh, black people engaged in, uh, but also as Douglas himself evolved and as Douglas himself aged. While so much of Douglas's greatest work was produced before and during the Civil War, the part of his life that intrigued me the most going in was the section after the Civil War, a period of time where black rights so newly entrenched in the Constitution were quickly being peeled back by legislative action and Supreme Court decisions. In fact, Blight uses this discourse to make one of the only contemporary political references I've ever really appreciated in a historical biography like this, with a few snide remarks being thrown at the late 20th and early 21st century Republican Party, comparing them to the Democratic Party of the late 19th century and how they undid the rights of minorities through all these kind of roundabout subversive means, a comparison that makes sense on a few levels. 
Douglas's role during this time is complicated because you see him receive multiple government appointments, most notably the United States Marshal appointment during the Hayes administration, and you get the sense that activists of the time believed him to be a member of the political elite on some level and thus uh, somewhat out of touch with the reality of these movements. And Blight shows that Douglas was no such thing and was in fact very outspoken even then. Rather, what's kind of going on here is you have signs of a movement that is so multifaceted it's splintering into these various schools of thought, um, as well as you have adjacent movements like the women's rights movement, who kind of separated themselves completely in kind of an ugly fashion when you read about it. It's a time of change, Douglas recognized that even then, and he held remarkably true to his values and his morals up until the end. The writing is engaging, the research is clearly thorough, and the story and figure Blight is profiling here endlessly fascinating. To be clear though, I would not recommend this instead of Douglas's narrative or his other autobiographies, which I haven't yet read but I hear excellent things about. It is a supplement, a way to fill in holes, and an entirely different way to view Douglas through the wondrous lens that we call hindsight. Obviously great. Pick it up, educate yourself, enjoy. And that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. As always, more reviews are to come. Tell a friend as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, right here at your home of the Music Deep Dive.